Welcome to Medicine Dish. I'm Kitty Marks, director of the CMS Tribal Affairs Group and your host of Medicine Dish. I hope you enjoyed our August Medicine Dish show, Working Together, Outreach and Enrollment of Children and Families in Medicaid and CHIP, Part 1, featuring the outreach and enrollment activities of the San Felipe Pueblo of New Mexico and the Indian Healthcare Resource Center in Tulsa. Today is part two of our travels to Indian Country to show you some of the innovative outreach and enrollment activities underway to get health care coverage for more American Indian and Alaska Native children. You'll hear about the challenges these programs have faced and what they've done to address them. And they'll share their helpful insights on what you can do to increase enrollment of children in your community. All this and more on today's installment of Medicine Dish. Again, welcome to Medicine Dish. Before we begin, let me share some information with our new viewers. The Medicine Dish was developed as a training tool for professionals, administrative, and medical staff located at healthcare programs operated by the Indian Health Service, tribes, tribal organizations, and urban Indian health programs. You can find our past shows, including Working Together, Outreach and Enrollment of Children and Families in Medicaid and CHIP Part 1, on YouTube. Just go to www.youtube.com and search on the words Medicine Dish. Today, we're going to highlight three CHIPRA grantee programs in two states. We'll see and hear from the Lake County Health Consortium that serves six tribes in Northern California, and visit two programs in Montana, the Indian Health Board of Billings and the Boca System of Care of the Blackfeet Tribe, and meet state officials from Montana. CMS spent a couple of days in each community, and we think we captured some great stories. To each of the communities we visited, thank you for sharing so that others in Indian Country we'll learn about some innovative and promising practices to increase the number of Indian children enrolled in Medicaid and CHIP. I hope all of you enjoy today's Medicine Dish broadcast and are inspired by the experiences and insights of the CHIPRA grantees. When we signed up for the CHIPRA grant for the Lake County Tribal Health Enrollment Program for Native Kids, we did it because of the community that we live in. We serve six uh, local Native tribes and various other tribes that are non-affiliated in the area. But the way our county is built, there's a big lake in the middle. So we have all these counties surrounding the lake. And it's really hard to reach some groups because either because of transportation, um, there's so many barriers, or even uh, gasoline costs nowadays, they can't come in. So uh, we're trying to target all these people that don't um, frequently come into the clinic and people who don't follow up with their Medi-Cal because it's just hard to get over to social services and they don't like waiting in line. I discovered that I had a lot of impact by going out to them because there's a lot of our native, especially our elders, that don't like coming in here. You know, they don't like having to deal with the paperwork or dealing with, you know, asking tons of questions. They hate that part of it. The million questions, they don't, they're very, you know, to themselves. So by me going out and just talking to them at first and getting to know them, it made it a little bit easier for them to want to do the paperwork and want to understand why it's important, you know, to have health insurance. We had this large group of uh, uninsured Native children that we wanted to insure, and we thought this would be a great uh, grant to sign up for to be able to have funds to target all these people who have been um, un uninsured. Basically, a day for me working on my CHIPRA grant would be making sure the children, children are insured. 
So if I have a lot of family with three kids, you know, and I have to do an application, making sure I explain to them how important it is for their child to be insured. No matter what, they would always get services at a tribal clinic. Having Madonna go out into the communities, out to the reservations on Commodities Days, and targeting people there because the word of mouth spreads, hey, there's somebody at Tribal Health who does all the paperwork for you. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is sign the paperwork and she'll get everything done for you. You don't have to go to social services. That's really, that's really, really been effective. The other effective thing has been people who normally do come into the clinic and they're targeted by our front desk and medical and then the importance of signing up for insurance is reiterated by our providers and um, those people are routed right to Madonna on the spot when they come in for their appointment and they run the insurance, which is medical records who runs the insurance, and if the child is uninsured, they write a sticky note on their chart and, you know, the doctor stresses to them how important it is for their child to be insured. So then when they're done with their doctor's visit, they come see me to sign up for health insurance. So you were interested in signing up for Medi-Cal today? Yes, uh, it's for me and my three kids, I have the youngest, which is two months old. I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old, too. Perfect. So we could sign them all up in one application. I had expected a lot of paperwork, kind of a lot of hoops to jump through, and uh, what I found was exactly the opposite. As soon as uh, the staff found out that I was a Native American born in California, and a uh, California native, they took me by the hand and did all my paperwork for me, and um, all I needed to provide was proof of uh, tribal membership. I fill out the application for them, they just have to sign the documents, and I also give them a printout of exactly what documents they need to bring back, and they're highlighted, so they see like, you know, it's a little bit easier than giving them a stack of papers and saying like, oh, you need to fill it out. <laughs> so I think it's a lot more comforting when, you know, you're breaking it down for them. Uh, Madonna, she made it really easy, and they filled out the paperwork for me, and filled out the application for me and asked the questions, all I had to do was answer their questions and they filled out the application for me. Our word of mouth is very important to us. Once they get qualified for getting Medi-Cal, we give them a gift certificate. So they told friends, family, you know, co-workers. So we give them a gift for signing their children up and then once they get um, approved or if they get a valid denial letter, um, they also get a $10 gift card. As soon as I left the facility, I called all my sisters and I told them exactly what happened, how easy it was, and yeah, I agreed to make this video. So if there is anybody else out there like me that is just wondering if they could possibly um, qualify, you need to get down there and find out because it, think how much you pay out of pocket a month for medical, you know, and you, that could be in your pocket still. We've been working on this program for a year now, and among some of the things that I've noticed are that, um, people are feeling more comfortable coming in to sign up for Medi-Cal or Healthy Families because they realize that it's really not as hard as they thought it was. Um, all they do is come in, Madonna fills everything out for them, uh, all they have to do is sign an application and bring in some documents and that's it. It's, it's not all the paperwork that they thought that they had to do. Somebody's doing it for them. Also, um, sometimes a barrier is uh, getting a birth certificate or social security card. Uh, Madonna takes them out to do that too. So then they realize, wow, this is easy. Uh, so one of the trends that I'm seeing now is that people are coming in, it's not as hard as they thought, and they're telling all their friends and family and we get more people in. Before our biggest challenge was not being able to cite verified IDs, birth certificate or social security card because the patient would be able to do the whole process with me to apply for Medi-Cal here but unable to show verifications because I wasn't working for social services. So recently, probably within the last like year, they finally allowed me to cite verify IDs, which has made it so much easier because the patient sometimes can't get transportation to go all the way to Lower Lake. And when you go, there's a wait of sometimes three hours that you're waiting just to get a paper cite verified. So finally they came to the conclusion in Lower Lake that I was doing a good job that they finally let me site verify. It was really hard to get them to have those documents site verified because they didn't want to go out to social services. They didn't want to wait in line. You know, they didn't want to make the drive out there. And so sometimes it would be weeks before they were able to finally get 
the, those documents site verified, other times they just wouldn't come back in and so it wouldn't happen. Luckily, Madonna was persistent enough with our social services department that they granted her, um, ac they granted her the authority to site verify herself. So she's here Monday through Friday. Now we have people that can come in anytime, site verify their documents, get those done and get those completed. My biggest advice for other grantees that are trying to have their native patients be insured through health insurance would be just finding a contact person at a local social service office, you know, and forming a relationship with them, basically, because that's going to be your main go-to-go -go person that you're going to want to um, ask them for information on how to do the process of Medi-Cal or any other health insurance. I have a great relationship with them, I think, because I call them every day to day basis. And there's some cases that I need, you know, a child's Medi-Cal right then and there, or an adult's Medi-Cal, for example, and they activate it that same day. So the turnaround time with me for them is awesome. As long as I do what they need me to do, they call me and they're like, this person needs a cap statement, you know, so I'm calling around and they need a yeah, check stub. And they call me, they don't call the patient, they call me. <laughs> so, you know, just having a good relationship with, you know, a go-to-go -go person and I would say social services. Another partnership we have is TANF and they send us documents including like verification, income, when the patient started getting TANF, so then social services has all of that in order to process the application correctly. Um, local tribal offices too that the patients from, they work pretty good, some of them. <laughs> they work close though. They get frustrated, but you know, you just have to keep trying. One of our other really uh, good partners is the local hospital, Sutter Lakeside Hospital. They have a birthing center there. So of course, you know, when somebody comes in having a baby or is accessing services at the birth center, they realize this person is uninsured, the child is gonna be uninsured, they're potentially eligible for Medi-Cal or healthy families. So they actually call Madonna. Madonna has on occasion gone out to the hospital after the child has been born and signs the person up for uh, Medi-Cal right on the spot and follows up with them afterwards. My best advice for other people trying to get their patients signed up for insurance is just basically just stay on top of it, just keep bugging them. There's, you know, I've heard the worst things sometimes that come out of patients' mouth, you know, that I bug them or I'm annoying. <laughs> but, and once they get it, they're like, thank you for getting me Medi-Cal, you know? So you just kind of have to stay on top of it even though they get annoyed and it's hard. But once the patient gets through the process and they've been approved, it's a lot easier to renew it than having to redo the documents all over again. By having more children enroll in Medi-Cal and Healthy Families, it really does mean having more resources and funding available to provide more services to the Native American community at Lake County Tribal Health. Um, when we have children enroll in Medi-Cal or Healthy Families, that means that every time they come in to access services at Tribal Health, um, we're gonna be getting money from healthy families and Medi-Cal for their services and therefore we're able to put that money towards more services such as bringing in more specialists, bringing in um, radiology, pharmacy, all kinds of services that are going to benefit the Native American community as a whole. Um, also it really benefits the contract health service program at Lake County Tribal Health because we don't have to put out as much money from our program which has really limited funding from the government um, for Native Americans, California Native Americans, um, who need services off-site, referral services, specialist services, hospital services, emergency services. So when we don't have to use money from contract health to pay for those services, then that just means we have more money, lasts us longer, keep us through the year, and help serve the people who aren't eligible for Medi-Cal or healthy families. The voters of Montana voted overwhelmingly by 72 percent majority to combine the children's portion of the Montana Medicaid program with the CHIP program. And together that then combined what we call Healthy Montana Kids. One of the things that we did at the very start of our initiative of enrolling kids into Healthy Montana Kids was understanding that part of our priority group 
kids that needed to be enrolled that were probably underrepresented in our Healthy Montana Kids program was Indian children. We're doing a lot of work in Montana as far as working with the tribes and part of that is making sure that we have that connection and that collaboration with the different tribal governments and with the tribal health departments. We've done that independently and it's been a focus of DPHHS ever since Healthy Montana Kids started and I even before that. It was very important to me uh, that, that we build the relationship between the state of Montana and the reservation programs, whether that be the tribal health programs or the Indian health service programs, and then our urban Indian programs. But the initial contact had to be developing the relationship, explaining the program, what is healthy Montana kids, and why is it a benefit for Indian children to enroll in this, in this program. And so we really had to gain that, that trust and relationship with our, with our Indian counterparts, um, you know, getting to know the tribal health directors, getting to know the uh, Indian health service directors, and them understanding what this program was. What we wanted to do was make sure that this underserved population in rural or isolated areas, that we made sure we found an innovative and creative way that was going to connect with those tribal families and make sure that they truly understood we had this opportunity of networking with them and working in tandem with them and collaboratively in covering their children under the Healthy Montana Kids program. One of the issues that we find in working with tribal people is they believe that their health care is a treaty right. And it is something that has a trust responsibility between the federal government and the tribes. That's true. How that health care comes can, is in, can come in a variety of ways. And so being able to teach people that getting health care through healthy Montana kids really did not in any way not honor that treaty responsibility, but in fact was, a, was a, something that enhanced it, that, reinfer, that affirmed it, then we were able to figure out how to get those kids enrolled. And who better did our tribal partners tell us than, than tribal elders? The genesis of the Respected Elder Campaign actually came from the, um, the individual tribal members who were part of our coalition partner. Um, we met with all of our coalition partners and we said tell us what works tell us what's not working tell us what you want to do differently or what we can help you do what was important that came out of that was individual tribes said that there are respected elders within their communities to whom people listen and that they may be more effective than the coalition partner themselves or someone coming from our program individually to say it's a good idea to enroll your child in the Healthy Montana Kids program. When the state of Montana found out that the uh, Indian Health Board of Billings and the Blackfeet tribe received outreach grants uh, to enroll kids into Healthy Montana Kids, I got the announcement on my, you know, through an email. I immediately wrote back to Margie Baird on Walk and Ron Johnson and the Blackfeet tribe saying, how can we help? You know, you're going to be enrolling kids in a state program. We want to be your partner. Tell us what you think we can do to help. We reached out. We went to them. We came up with a strategic plan. We taught them about our program. Um, what I looked at was this wonderful, wonderful opportunity for the state of Montana, who had their own outreach grant, who had tribal partners already. What we looked at is another opportunity to get kids enrolled in Healthy Montana Kids. I think it's really important between tribes and states for the state not to have that this is our program and not yours. In Montana, we reached out and said, Healthy Montana Kids, is Indian People's Program as well, and we're going to work with you to get as many kids enrolled. Because in the end, that really was both of our goals, the tribal programs that received the funding and the state program. Montana has been very blessed in the fact that not only did the Department of Public Health and Human Services receive a CHIPRA outreach enrollment grant, but so did uh, two tribal entities, the POCA system of care in the Blackfeet area and then the Indian Health Board in the Billings area. Now, for the grant that the Department of Public Health 
uh, received, we ended up with a total of 16 coalition partners in conjunction with the department who had a direct relationship. We had um, where they would help individuals complete applications. They would then call us and say, what's the status of the application? Does someone need more information? Tell me what else I can do to assist them. And we had that direct relationship with them as partners uh, and business associates directly with the department. When the two separate agencies received separate Chipra Indian outreach grants, it's a different relationship, but it's still a relationship that can work. It wasn't immediate, it wasn't necessarily easy, but it was critical that when those two separate grantees worked with families and submitted applications. We wanted to make sure that that communication process was open so that we could share with them, again, in a very confidential manner, what this family still needed to do in order to complete an application and enroll a child. Our department has figured out ways to reach across the many programs we provide for a single initiative to get kids enrolled in Healthy Montana Kids and then making sure that kids get health care. So it's not just about enrolling the kids, it's about making sure that then they go and they get their preventive screenings and that they get to the dentist. You know, so the stories that I hear, um, I'm overwhelmed, I mean, as you can see. And to the point where three months ago, I became a grandma, and uh, uh, two weeks ago, my uh, daughter said, and you're holding a healthy Montana kid. Uh, so the success isn't just on a statewide level, a professional level. It's really knowing that my own grandchild is now a healthy Montana kid. The health problems of Indian children start very early, particularly with obesity and um, they're gonna last their whole lifetime, you know. We've been trying to um, help them see that they don't have to live this way. Urban kids uh, are without a lot of things, and so to have this program to at least qualify them for health care is uh, something I'm real happy about. We see between 75 and 80 different tribal affiliations that are here in Billings and the surrounding areas. Of that, um, our, our yearly encounters is well over 10,000 people that come through our doors here for services. Throughout this uh, Healthy Montana Kids enrollment process, we have enrolled 163 American Indian children in the program, and we have had a 100% success rate in getting them determined eligible by the state. There isn't a person that walks in to be seen at the clinic here that is not asked, are you enrolled in Medicare, Medicaid, or the Healthy Montana Kids Program? And it's because of our tenacity that we've been so successful in this effort, the folks we have working on the program. It is something we, we feel very strongly about very strongly about. And with the support we've had from the folks at the state, the members of the community, I think we'll continue to be successful. But it's, it takes a lot of hard work. It takes a lot of hard work. When we first uh, initially started this process, uh, I worked along with uh, uh, Ron Johnson and as well as the executive director. Uh, we put our heads together to, to get this grant proposal underway. Uh, we seen that there's, there was a need for that in, in our area and then the community of Billings. Uh, number, number one, you know, um, everybody should be able to deserve health care. And when we look at the children involved in it, we found, that, we found that to be a very important focal point as to what we wanted to do. We partnered with the state and we became one of their enrollment partners whereby we were able to process applications electronically. That has worked very well. The state has been a very good partner with us. We have access to folks at the state level who when you dial the, the help number, you actually get to talk to a real person. You don't have to go through that long litany of extensions and that type of thing. 
So that's really helped the process. We've been doing a lot of outreach and enrollment in trying to get kids covered under the Healthy Montana Kids program. We have gone to all of the schools in the school district, which is 58 different schools from primary, middle school to high school. I coordinate the Indian Education Department for Billings Public Schools, which oversees the students in Billings Public Schools that are Native American. We have a Title VII grant which focuses on reading, math, attendance, and graduation. We also have Indian Education for All, which is a state-mandated state um, law that we do with curriculum. We also have American Indian Achievement Gap that focuses on achievement. So those are the things I oversee for about roughly about 1,350 kids in our district who are identified American Indian. So we were approached by the Indian Health Board, um, Ron Johnson, to help with the initiative of getting Native American families enrolled in the health program CHIP. And so we have two to four different meetings that we have happen throughout the school year. And these are um, Indian Education Parent Committee meetings. They are Title VII open public meetings. So we invite all families to come of Native American descent. And we ask them to come over as they approached us to have a, a booth and to present this, they actually presented, they came to schools, they actually came to a lot of our um, low income Title I schools talking about CHIP. And so that's how we partnered with them and we and we've, we were very successful in getting that partnership going just because I think um, it, was an, it was open communication and it was non-threatening for the parents and the kids to get involved. A lot of people were reluctant to sign up for this program because they were concerned that maybe the information shared in this application, since it is a, a state-administered program, that the information that they shared in the application would be shared with Child Support Enforcement Services, Internal Revenue. So we worked with the State Director of the Department of Public Health and Human Services, Anna Whiting Sorrell, and through her legal department, they did provide us with a letter we can share with our potential applicants that the only people that this information will be shared with is for its intended purposes, that being healthy Montana kids. So that alleviated a lot of the fears of the folks who at one point didn't really want to apply for it. We have done outreach activities at uh, four boys and girls clubs here in Billings. And we have gone to up to the Bureau of Indian Affairs and the Indian Health Service to meet with uh, the families there because, as you know, with the income guidelines for the Healthy Montana Kids program, that a lot of the lower graded employees employed by the federal government their children can still be included in the Healthy Montana Kids program. And of course, the Indian Health Board produces the Medicine Wheel program. It's on our local cable network, and it's pu public television, but we reach out to an awful lot of families through that, the viewing audience and how Cable 7 figures it. But we reach out to about 17,000 viewers and we have had folks from the state Medicaid agency who've come in, they, they've talked about the Healthy Montana Kids program from the state perspective. And we've also had a number of uh, community leaders who, have, who we've partnered with. We have a significant number of partners that we work with to get uh, American Indian kids enrolled in the program. We also do outreach activities at the Head Start program here in Billings where we find that we, we do have access to an awful lot of, of Indian families. Our organization is a Head Start program for three and four year old low income children. We happen to serve three counties. All the kids who attend our program attend half day and they receive a really high quality program that includes education, but also health and dental and a number of other services for the children and their families. Our work with the Indian Health Board came about because we, as organizations, we're both trying to promote uh, parents getting health insurance for their kids. We have a wonderful program in our state of Montana 
and it, the word was not getting out. The population that we serve at Head Start is about 14 to 17 percent Native American from the Crow and Northern Cheyenne tribes. And frankly, those parents, the Native parents, just don't trust the information they receive uh, from folks who are not Native. And I understand that. Their health system is very complicated. So we decided at the beginning to work with our local Indian Health Board because they have the expertise. They really know how the system works. And we have found it to be a great collaboration. This is Kathy over at Head Start. We have a new application. The Indian Health Board is an easy agency to work with. I mean, it really took just a couple of phone calls to start our relationship. And they were very gracious to us, very willing to accept referrals. I mean, we were kind of backlogged. We had plenty to offer initially. And they just opened their doors, and they were ready for, for our people. So it's, it's been very low maintenance, because they had the expertise that we didn't have. And that's what made it a kind of an easy uh, marriage, the two, two agencies. By reaching out to, to the schools, we do come across, you know, the age groups that we're looking for. You know, we, we get all the preschool, we get all of the elementary through the, through the high school level. So I would say our, our biggest uh, bang for our buck has been the outreach with the, with the schools. Well, in our, in our outreach efforts, we, we do a lot of marketing. You know, we have, we have a monthly, new, my monthly new newsletter that we create. We have commercials, um, a television commercial as well as radio, radio spots. Um, getting that word out there, um, that's the biggest thing. And if um, we, we get people that come here because they, they hear these things or see these things on radio and stuff like that. And coming from a Native American affiliation here or an organization, and to be able to do those things, um, we find we find that great. I mean, we we don't we're, we don't discriminate against nobody here. Um, anybody that comes through the door, we we offer them the services. Um, but our marketing strategies have have really worked well. There are some ins and outs to the program that we have been learning as we go through this process. So for the folks out there who may be struggling a bit with the grant, maybe not seeing the numbers they want, it's just get out there and work with your different community organizations. You know, most parents um, who are referred to Healthy Montana Kids through the health board are so appreciative. Uh, their expectations are kind of low when they go into it, and they're just amazed at how well they're treated, how respectful the whole process is, and really how quickly it turns around once you get your application in. It was, um, some parents have said to me, you know, they took the mystery out of it. We thought you send those papers to Helena, you never see them again. Um, but that's not how it works. So the feedback I get is a lot about they treated me respectfully, they talked to me as a person, they explained everything, and that's real meaningful to our Native parents. I very, feel very, very proud of what the partnership we have built built with the Indian Health Board on getting this um, health program out there into our Native American families. It, it always seems to be um, that I can't be involved in this. I don't, I don't know how to get involved in health care. I don't have health care. What am I going to do? Where do I go for health care? Who's a good health care provider? So they don't even have the language of, of getting that. So when we partnered with them, you know, in the education, in an education department with the Indian Health Board, the language is merged. It wasn't this separate language barrier. They merged together. Um, and so that's been a very successful part. And just getting to know the Indian Health Board and, and, and I use the services. I, my son needed a TB test and that's where we went because it was quick and it was easy and we got right in. And we are Native American and I think that's the biggest thing is that we built that relationship. And I just pride myself that I've been on CHIP. My kids utilized CHIP back when it was getting very first started. It's a very reliable program. It's a non-threatening program. Um, the health providers welcome it. And our Native American families, I think, are thriving on that, on that welcome mat.
living on a reservation, there's not a whole lot of work. There's not a whole lot of um, programs. And um, so it's kind of like we start from the bottom and build them. And with the CHIPRA program, we saw the opportunity that if we're going to do medical billing for our programs, our services with mental health, most of our children were not enrolled. And it really was an opportunity. We're seeing more and more opportunity as we're learning more and more, is that Indians have a myth that they don't need medical insurance because they go to Indian Health Service. But there's a lot of services that the families and children aren't getting, such as the children's mental health. The Boca System to Care, this is its last year. I believe it's a six-year grant. And it was set up to work with uh, emotionally disturbed children who are having problems in school, the family. They do an assessment, and if they are emotionally disturbed, <clears throat> they admit them into the program. And usually most of all the children are, you know, in one way or another, um, have emotional problems. We built the, um, wrote a grant to do child protection. Then we wrote a grant to do our own foster care on a reservation and the Indian Child Welfare Act. There were so many children, Blackfeet children, being removed from the reservation. Um, if they got picked up because their parents were drunk or if um, they were left alone, the kids would be placed off the reservation in foster homes. Well, we didn't have it. So we developed it and we now have 89 foster homes. And we felt that these parents love their children, but they didn't have the skills to work with them. Well, no one ever worked on the part of what's happening with the children as they're removed. What's happening to the children when they lose their parents? What's happening to the children um, when they drop out of school and become pregnant? And, and all of these social problems that we're facing. So we thought, we really need services on a reservation to help our children and our families to reunite and go back to our traditions. Horses have always been part of our culture, the Blackfeet culture. And you'll see a lot of horses on a reservation roam. And my dad being an elder, he always says, horses are a status for the Blackfeet. Um, you always have to have horses. And, ki and kids are natural. They'll learn quickly. And if you don't have that healing inside of them, they're always broken. And so that's what made us look at the best practice part in terms of horse equine therapy. There's a lot of kids, you know, in the public schools who, even in junior high, who get into that alcohol, substance abuse, and they get to use their, uh, the program to go off and to uh, facility that treats the young children. Because there is no adolescent center for um, substance abuse here on the reservation. Almost every service that we're doing, we can do some type of billing to CHIPS. And um, so it was um, really nice to see that come along right when it did, because we're in our final year, and, and um, we needed, we didn't even know our kids were enrolled in anything, because um, that was one question we never asked our families, do you have insurance? Usually have a list of uh, possible clients with their phone numbers. Uh, we received them from doing, um, surveys at the schools and we go from that list or I do um, I created a Facebook um, page for uh, Blackfeet Chipra program and we sometimes get some hits off that I try to put something on there 
health-wise or um, something to do with uh, being healthy so that they can at least look and know that we have um, health insurance for them and just to spark their interest. A myth is, well, we don't need medical insurance. But we're like, well, if your child needs to go for um, orthodontist or something, Indian Health Service will ask you to enroll them because um, your children are eligible for it. And you'll have a choice now and a choice where to go. And usually that's a pretty good selling point to them. Parents are starting to see it more and more. Of course, we're new with the chips, but they're starting to see, hey, I got an alternative to my health care. I could take them here. I could take them off the reservation. If they don't have the services here on a reservation, we can go elsewhere. And that's something that we've never had a choice as a parent here. If they're working parents, once they understand, yes, they really do appreciate that opportunity for um, health, health insurance. So I guess in getting educated ourselves, we found that all of, most of our children on the reservation are eligible, including our tribal employees, including um, the school employees, children. We've worked with the Polka Ranch to try to enroll children and staff members that might be eligible. We just tried to help them to identify any child that might be eligible for Healthy Montana Kids to be sure that every child we have has health care available. A lot of natives don't trust the state because we're sovereign. Our people should be doing it. Our people should be educating them. And our people should be there to answer their questions because they trust us. In order to enroll children into CHIPRA, um, not only do the staff have to be trained on all of the questions the parents are going to ask, but the state has helped us. They gave our um, staff training on taking the applications. You think it's not a challenge, but it is a challenge because if you look at the poverty on our reservation, a lot of our um, parents don't have phones. They don't have cell phones. Some of the kids do. They don't have transportation, and we're very rural. So you might have a parent 35 miles away that you go to visit, and they don't have the, the stub when they got their first check, or the stub when they um, did an odd job. So how do we um, get the parent to realize we need copies of their income? These are guidelines we have to follow. Or um, work around the parent schedule. Well, we see you're very busy at your work hours, but we can come in the evening. Or we can come on this weekend. Or when would you like us to come? We can come right to your house. And a lot of people don't want individuals in their home. So we ask them, would you rather come out here? Would you rather meet somewhere? Would you rather even do it in a car? <laughs> but let's get it done. Some of our children, they need inpatient medical. We couldn't refer them because they didn't have insurance, but now we can. We are starting to refer children that are, um, need the inpatient to some state facilities, which we've never had that opportunity to do. And we say, oh, they're on the CHIPRA program. And right away uh, are the Healthy Montana Kids, what they call it here. Mm -hmm. um, then they take them. This, to me, I can just see the um, services opening up for natives with the CHIPRA program and the enrollment of it. The, the Healthy Montana Kids program has been very positive. It has, uh, the, now the parents are saying that they get to have a choice. They can bring their children to like dentists off the reservation. You know, if they get sick, they can bring them into the emergency any, at any place, you know, instead of waiting for the Indian Health Service. And it's just been a really big help to them, you know. Indian Health Service is so booked. It's really difficult to get um, 
eye exams for children. It's hard to get dental for children. You might be booked three months down the road and then may miss your appointment. So what's the alternative? Well, you get the chips and you can call around to these places and get your child in. And um, I, as I see this, I start seeing a lot of things we can do on our end in working with, with um, systems of care is we really need to do some kind of weight program for our families and our children, some nutrition things. And, and so I guess when you're looking at mind, body, soul, um, there's so many different things we can do to help our families in the health care system. And the CHIPRA program has really opened the door to build a lot more programs that we don't have. This is health the rest of your life. And somehow we need to figure that, um, how could we get everyone signed up for health? And I know with President Obama in there, I was really pleased to see how he's working so well with tribes. But us as a tribe have to have planners. Us as a tribe have to do it ourselves. If we live on a reservation, if we don't do it, nobody's gonna do it. So we have to step up and say, well, if we don't know how to sign someone up for health care, we better learn it. So the tribes need to be trained to do it themselves. And, and it has to be embedded into the community and part of the health plan of the tribes. Because insurance is probably really critical to the future of a lot of our children. And that's what we need. We need healthy children.